I think I was probably four years old when I started playing hockey. My mom put us in some skates and I absolutely fell in love with it and then she put me in Timbits and ever since then she couldn't uh, keep me off the ice. And after house league I just I kept playing and I kept getting better and better and I played selects and then moved up to AAA um, with the Markham Waxers boys team. Um, and I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be the best hockey player I could be, the best baseball player I could be, best at anything. Um, so I just, I kept playing and I absolutely love the game more than anything in the world. And I wanted to be a hockey player. I wanted to go to the Olympics. I wanted to be a professional hockey player. Um, and just through natural progression, I, I ended up getting a scholarship to Colgate University. So it was my sophomore year, so the end of my second year um, at Colgate. Um, I just started not to feel well. I lost a ton of weight, like 30 pounds without trying. It, I just had all of these weird um, symptoms. But again, I was, I was away from my regular doctors at school, so I just held off on going and just kind of pushed through it. like. A lot of athletes do. You have something wrong and you just feel like you should grind through it. So that's what I tried to do. And for the first time in program history at Colgate, we made the ECAC tournament. So I didn't want to leave to go to the doctor at home. And, and I think it was on my birthday, we ended up losing out of the, the tournament, which was probably the best thing that could have happened for me because I got to go home right after that. And my mom, Right away, she saw how thin I looked and how sick I looked, and she took me to the hospital right away, and immediately they knew I was diabetic. That, that was it. That was the life-changing moment right there. I was sitting in the hospital with my mom, and we just kind of looked at each other like, well, this is it now. <laughs> that fear initially was heavy. And there were a lot of tears and just not knowing, not having any answers because I've never had to deal with it. I didn't know anybody with type 1 diabetes before that. So it was just a lot of unknown and the unknown can be scary. Probably my first question to the doctor, like how, how can I still play sports? Is it possible? And with all the technology these days, like it, it makes it not easy, but so manageable. I came across Dexcom, um, actually Spiro's our old coach, his wife works for Diabetes Canada and just through that connection she introduced me to the representative at Dexcom um, which just goes in the back of my arm. It's a constant glucose monitoring system and I have the app on my phone and so it gives me a lot of peace of mind. I don't have to constantly prick my finger um, or wonder what it is. I, I, all I have to do is open my phone, so it's super easy to use and it just gives me a lot more comfort in knowing that if something were to go wrong, my levels go too high or too low, that an alarm's gonna go off and, and I know I can help myself and in an unfortunate circumstance that I can't, someone else can, just because of that alarm. So I'm super thankful that I have access to that. I think I'm very privileged to be in this spot. I mean, I've worked hard to get here, but it's always a, a privilege to play a sport, and I consider myself very lucky. Uh, it's awesome that young boys and girls look up to me, um, and if, if any of those kids out there who have a diabetes diagnosis, I know it can be scary, but um, you can get through anything. Um, don't let it stand in your way. There's so many resources out there. And, and if I can be an example of being able to, to push through that diagnosis and living with this condition, um, and I, I can just be an example for somebody, then that's awesome. In front. Oh, that would have been saved they score on the rebound. Wilson Bennett on the doorstep nods us up at three. I think probably my biggest piece of advice is to lean on the people that are around you and it's very cliche but it's okay not to be okay and 
ask for help. Um, it's gotten me through some of the hardest times in my life and it's your support system and the people around you that you love and care about that are, are going to get you through it at the end of the day. So always ask for help if you need it and even if you don't need it, um, just talking and not being ashamed of anything is, is super important.